It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. Yeah! Super cool. How about that? Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... Yes! ..and valiant losers. Blast it! Will it be the high road to glory... <laughs> ..or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. This week, we've been training our cameras on dealer Stephanie Connell and auctioneer Charlie Ross. Look at this man on his bicycle. He's got a GoPro on his hat. What's all that about? I think most cyclists do it now for safety. Really? Yeah. Well, we do it to educate, inform and all that. I'm like David Attenborough, observing antiques experts in their natural habitat from a drone. Remarkably rural, isn't it? Well, if you think, we're probably only, what, 20, 25 miles from central London? It's amazing. Oh, but no, no, try third, darling, not first. Yay! That's it. Towards you and up. Yay, we got there. Regular viewers will have been keenly following Steph's gear changing fortunes. You've got this absolutely nailed, haven't you? Yeah. And just like any natural history documentary, we're very fond of drama. Oh, there's a tractor coming. There's a tractor coming. Tractor, dive. This is the narrowest road in the whole of Hertfordshire, and there's a tractor coming the other way. Oh, Personally, my man is on him. Smart manoeuvre, Steph. Thank you. What we zoologists call the self-preservation instinct. That's Whoa. it. Whew. Now, let's remind ourselves. Steph from Surrey started out collecting stamps and decided to become an auctioneer at the tender age of 14. I love things like this. She has a passion for TV and movies, while Oxfordshire's Charlie Ross is an altogether different beast. Yeah! He loves sporting memorabilia and fine furniture. It's walnut of a beautiful patination. It's, it's in superb condition. Yep, that just about sums him up, really. <laughs> and don't forget the third amigo, one Hillman Minx Super. Do you like the colour? Yes, that's really girly, but I do like the colour. It is a nice colour. Is it your favourite colour, blue? No, my favourite colour is green. Also, the colour of money, of course. Saw point there. Steph, who set out with £200, is just £158 and 26p right now. Come on, Steph! While Charlie, who began with the same sum, is thoroughly enjoying his £365 and 26 pence. Oh. I'm quite likely to buy something for 200 now. Are which you? Which will sell for 60. When does Don't that you think this competition is all over? Because I can tell you it isn't. Trust you, you're an auctioneer. <laughs> well, it's a profession, actually. They kicked off in Kent and thoroughly explored that county before venturing both north and west, currently journeying through the middle of England towards the Cotswolds and then Wales. Eventually, they'll swing back east before finally reaching Journey's End in Leicestershire at Market Harbour. Later, they'll be going to Gloucestershire for an auction at Wooten Under Edge. But shopping destination number one is Dunstable. Well, it will be. Excuse me! Already dropped her buddy off, I see. Help me, I'm trying to find my way to Dunstable. Perhaps Charlie took the map. Yeah. Onto the A5, and that'll take you all the way to Dunstable Town Centre. You're amazing. Thanks so much. I'm Steph. Thank you, dear. Oh, I'm Tony. Nice to meet you, Tony. It's loving your tractor. Thank, Thank you very much. What a nice man. Now, this is more like it. Market Town, Old Priory. Antique shop with car park. <laughs> there she goes. Just £158 and 26p to spend, remember. Hello there. Oh, you hello. Richard. I'm Steph. Pleased to meet you, Steph. Nice to meet you. Your shop is amazing. Oh, thank you. She's not wrong. Hats, too. Well, Luton, home of the Hatters, is close by. Mmm, good look. It's Tony from earlier. It's the same make of tractor. It even looks like Tony. I wouldn't have made it without you, Tony. I'll put you back so you can tell other people directions. Well, I quite fancy the trip to Gloucestershire, actually. Oh, they're nice. On first look, they look like they're Bakelite. But I don't actually think they are. They look, they're silver. They're definitely some kind of stone. Possibly jade. And it says that they're 1911, but stylistically, that 
doesn't seem right. Let's have a little look. And then not 1911, then 1923. So that makes more sense because they're more of an Art Deco kind of teaspoon. Quite. Price, £65. These ones are definitely a maybe, but there's loads in this shop. Sport for choice, isn't she? Definitely maybe. Oh, that's very pretty. So this looks to be a very sweet Art Nouveau period pewter vase. I would guess that it would be made between about 1895 and 1905. Pewter is also a typical Art Nouveau metal. It has a maker's mark underneath which says Orivit, German or French, I would guess. It's nice, it's got a little bit of damage just there. It's took a little bit of knock, a little bit misshapen, but it is, you know, over 100 years old. It's £28, so it is affordable. I really like this. Hesitate to ask, but uh, anything else? This is an Art Deco mantel clock with a marble base, chromed, very 1920s, 1930s. It reminds me of New York or Chicago. It looks like America. It is working. You'd have to set it to the right time. Here's a tip. Set your clock to the right time, go away, come back in an hour or so, and then see if it's still keeping the same time. And hope it doesn't sell in the meantime. It's £68. What I might do is I might go and ask Richard what the best price on it is, because I do love it. She's headed your way, Richard. Look out. Hi! I've seen this absolutely gorgeous clock. It's priced at £68, which is probably right. going to be a little bit out of my price okay. range. OK, 68 I can do 58 How about that? If that's your best, I'm probably going to have to leave it. What if I said £50? It's a potential that's, of 50 actually. I'm yeah, getting distracted, though, because I've seen, I've seen something else while I'm oh, standing right, here. Oh, right, OK. Crikey, that's a big copper. Oh, yes. Some kind of presentation It award? is, yes. It's for art, isn't it, I believe? Yeah, it is. It's dated as well. Oh, yeah, they're 1857. 1857. I like things when they're a bit unusual yeah, and they've maybe got an interesting different. history. 38. 38. I can do 30 on that yeah? for you. Yeah. OK, that's a definite potential. There's so many things in this shop, though. <laughs> um, I've seen at least two other things that I want to talk to you about. All right, OK. BRB or be right back. That one is, that one is 28. Is... It's got a little bit of damage on it, which is the thing that's putting me off it. I can do £20 on that for you. OK. And then this set of spoons. I'll do £50 on them for you. How's that? OK. With heavy heart, I think I'm going to have to leave the clock, even though I love it. Right. I think I'm going to take the roundel medal and the spoons, if that's All right. OK. So the two is 80, yes. Yeah. All right, deal. Lovely. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very sir. much. Okay. Two out of four ain't bad. 80. There you oh, are. That's lovely. Still over half of her kitty mind. Thanks lovely. very much, Richard. Thanks Pleasure a lot. With you. you too. Take care now. Good luck. Now, while Steph loads and points the minx towards the next destination, we'll catch up with Charlie down beside the canal in the Hertfordshire Mill village of Apsley to discover the area's historic role in the manufacture of paper. Aha! Are you Peter? I am indeed. Welcome, Charlie. Very Thank nice you to very much you. indeed. Welcome to Frogmore. This is the world's oldest mechanised paper mill and yes. the birthplace of paper's industrial revolution 200 years ago. May we have a look? I'd be delighted to show you. Thank you. Peter Burford is the Visitor Services Manager at Frogmore, still a working mill, where they've been making paper since 1774. I traditionally think of paper being made out of wood, but can you make paper out of anything? Indeed. Wood that we use now yeah. is a very recent invention. Is it? it only really came, to, came about in the late 1800s. Paper is only two ingredients. Yeah. Plant fibre and right. water. Right. So, you could make so a piece if it of grows. Paper. If it grows, you could make paper out of it. Paper making in Britain, mostly using rags as the raw material, dates from the late 15th century. With nearby Seal Mill, which supplied a printing associate of William Caxton amongst the first. But although they do still make some paper by hand here, it's a very slow process. This way. As Charlie is about to discover. Stir it round. Good, good it's action. It's cold, mate. Peter! It is cold. <laughs> yeah. And this is basically a flat sieve. The whole action is to dip it in yep. fairly quickly and bring it out in yep. one motion. You're capturing as many of those fibres as you Wonderful. can. Now, shake it side to side. No rags here, just wood pulp. OK, right, on there. Now, 
Over onto the vacuum bench here. That's just sucking some of the water out now. What we've got to do is transfer it from the mould yes. onto something that we can dry it on. Hold it upright and then down. That's it. Right. Yeah. And rock that just side to side. Do I lift the mould up? up one end. There you go. Good grief. Well done. You've made your first piece of paper. I... Take it over to the press. Yeah. Down on top of this one. It it's doesn't very do. like a book press, press isn't exactly it? Exactly like a book press. And yeah. you see a lot of water comes out of this. After it's been pressed out, then it's going to take another two, maybe three days of air drying. This, of course, is incredibly labour intensive. Which is why, in the late 18th century, as the Industrial Revolution heated up and mass information was required, a mechanical means of producing paper cheaply became essential. What have we got here? We have a one-fifth scale model of the very first paper machine, one that was installed here in 1803, designed by Louis-Nicolas Robert. So do you put pulp on the top there? Robert's stroke of genius was to create the continuous wire and the stock is poured onto the wire oh. which is a much more reliable method of forming it than trying to pull <laughs> a mould out of a vat. Yes. Next came the forerunners of the huge machines that are used to manufacture paper today. Called a foudrinier, after the French brothers who financed its development, this one uses a felt blanket and rollers to squeeze out the water before cutting the reel into sheets. It meant less workers making much more paper. Good news. For the first time, a completely finished, dry piece of paper comes off the end of the machine. So the speed is phenomenally greater and the price is just a quarter of what it was before. Thanks to the innovations which began here in Hertfordshire, Britain was producing 650,000 tonnes of paper per year by the end of the 19th century. So, Charlie, this is PM4 here at Frogmore Mill. This machine was built in 1902, and this is what we use every day to make paper. You can see the sheet forming. A bit of whitish water. Yeah. Within because, about four yards, you've got a sheet yeah. of paper. It's a little bit temperamental. It's not so much a science, it's decidedly an art running <laughs> this machine. But while Charlie's been on a bit of a roll, <laughs> young Stephanie has motored on. Not that her road trip chum is ever far from her thoughts. Charlie is one of the funniest people I've ever met, and he makes me laugh non-stop. He's the best person you could spend a road trip with. Unfortunately, from her point of view, he's also miles ahead. So, better buy wisely in Aylesbury, where, very close to the Grand Union Canal, they have the end of the world, a memorable shop name. Oh, good idea, eh? Turned out a bit chilly. Hello there. Oh, hi, Steph. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Made How are you it doing? In the end. I made it in the end. Oh. What a fantastic selection of stuff you've got here. There's so many items. They are. They're lovely. I've been collecting them forever. I'll be honest with you, though, I've got very little money, so I'm looking for things that are fantastic but a bargain, as hard as that might be to come by. But well, You've come to the right place. Always nice to hear, although Gary has yet to discover quite how strapped she is. Just over £78 to her name. I can tell immediately that this is an interesting piece of furniture. So what it is, is an air ministry or a war department desk designed during the war to be easily transportable. So how it works is each of its legs is on a screw which you can unscrew, take off, and then in the very back there is slots in which to put the legs so you can transport them with the legs and you're ready to go. Now if, with my handy phone torch, I have a little look, so this one has WD War Department, then the date that it was manufactured or owned, so in this case October 61. I know I'm not going to be able to afford it, but I'll have a look anyway. Yep, it's 175. I'll carry on looking around, but a great piece of furniture. She seems happy enough. What about Charlie, strolling up Wendover High Street? Yes, he's about to go shopping in the Chilterns. Something comfortingly straightforward about that name. These look promising. I love a bit of simulated bamboo. I like garden furniture too. And these are very Regency looking, darling. Very Regence. Now, if these were 19th century, they would be worth a fortune. They would be made of cast iron uh, or possibly bamboo itself. They are, in fact, sadly, 
made of aluminium, which is a bit of a shame, but they look the part. Of course they need painting, but, but we're going to the Cotswolds. They love garden furniture out there. There's two carvers, two singles, 100 pounds. If these could be bought for a nifty 50, I think I'd have a go at these. Well, let's go and meet the man in charge. Shop! Shop! Ah! Mike! Nice to see you, Charlie. How are you? Very good. Welcome to Antiques at Wendell. I muddled around in your back garden okay. a bit. I think there are four not Georgian, not Victorian, aluminium. Ah, oh, aluminium. <laughs> Early aluminium. Early aluminium. <laughs> They're not mine, but I can oh. negotiate on behalf of the dealer. I think if somebody applied a coat of paint to them mm -hmm. and gi perhaps gilded them up a bit... OK, blind. They could... Yeah, no, I do think they've got they that look. Rococo. Oh! Darling. <laughs> <laughs> what would you be prepared to offer? I would certainly pay £50 for them, but anything above that, gamble. Realistically, their best possible price would be 75 which is 25%. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's so a good discount. can't be any less than that. No, fine. They've got a look, which is half the battle, isn't it, in this it business? Is. Age no longer matters, does Just it? Just as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, no chairs for Charlie, then. With her, Steph, at the end of the world, as we know it. This is interesting. This looks to be an Art Deco table. The top looks like it's Bakelite, but the rest of it is tin. I like it a lot. I think it's usable, chic, probably 30s. Almost certainly. Perhaps it was a prototype by a 1930s designer. Um, it's £90, but I might have a word with Gary to see what his best price on it is. She's only got 78, remember? I found this Art Deco table that's over here. Stand by, Gary. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It's... I've had this for a long, long time now. Maybe a drinks trolley, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. OK, what are you prepared to offer me? I can't really go more than £40, but if you don't want to take 40 that's fine. I appreciate what it's What about 50 for. I can't afford 50. I wish I could. If I could, I would. Can you think it is? <laughs> dear, oh dear. If you don't want to sell it to me for 40, I appreciate that. You can have it for 40 pound, but give me a ring when you sell it and tell me what you get for it. Will do. OK. I would appreciate it. Deal. Deal oh, done. Thank, Thank you very much. You. So, while they complete the formalities... Thank you there very much you indeed. Are. Let's go over to Wendover. What's he seen in there? Now, do you know what this is? This is an old garden privy, sort of thing that people had at the bottom of their gardens in my day, before you had proper flashing loos inside. You used to walk down to the bottom of the garden with a good book and go into the privy. And this is a Vesta case for putting your matches in. You see, put your matches in there and strike the bottom. And people collect Vesta cases, and I don't think I've ever seen one in the form of a privy. Silver Vesta cases can be worth thousands. This is brass, but... Charming, nevertheless, and it's beautifully modelled. <laughs> I bet you can't guess what you find when you open a privy door. No, tell us. Have you guessed? No, reveal all. <laughs> it's wonderful. What I particularly like about this is he's still got his top hat on. So he is a serious gentleman. Might be a lord. It's £125, but it's a talking point. I'll have a word. Well, at least it's one of Mike's. I've been quite modest on the retail at 125 because I've never seen another one. Modest. <laughs> but I would retail. take an offer on it, obviously. It's like not my offer. Do... <laughs> like... What do you suggest? What are... Well, I would like to offer you £50. In fact, I'd be overjoyed to offer you £50. And you haven't fainted. How about 65 I think it would be cheese-pairing of me to go any lower. It would be rude. Thank you very much. Looks like they've Lord Privy sealed the deal. Wait for it. Oh, yes, there he goes. Meanwhile, Steph, having bought that Art Deco drinks table for £40, has somehow persuaded Gary to sell her something from his reclamation collection for a tenner. Gosh. You can have two <laughs> terracotta tiles, the paving blocks. Okay. We've got all different tiles. Let's have a little look what else we've got. Yeah, let's. I'm going to give you this old pump. Oh, my gosh, really? Which, when you put it in the auction, must make between 30 35 for £10. Oh, Gary, I'll shake your hand. That's a really good deal. I love these old water pumps. Well, that's a good job, then. There you are. I'm getting rich. <laughs> Any old irony? <laughs> now, not a word to Charlie, mind. Keep it neutral. 
Haven't we been lucky with the weather? Yeah, we really have. One good thing to say about this car is it's always very warm. Super cosy, these super minxes, nighty night. Our two trippers do seem to be in a very giggly mood today. I got a present for you. A present? A Hilma Minx. No! Yes! It's beautiful. It's nice, isn't it? Oh! You get to keep him forever and remember the trip. Oh, I really like that. Did you buy that with your shopping money? Well, no. Because it would be the best thing you bought. <laughs> Cheeky monkey. Success must be going to his head. Yesterday, Steph acquired an Art Deco table, an old water pump, a set of teaspoons and a Victorian copper medal. All right, deal. Leaving her with just over £28 for whatever might tempt her today, whilst Charlie bought only a brass Vesta case privy. So he is a serious gentleman. So he's still sitting on over £300. I wonder if he'll spend much of it. Oh, 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 Oh dear, I think I have a bit of a clutch slip. Right there. Calm yourselves. Later, they'll be off to a Gloucestershire auction at Wooton Under Edge, but the first stop today is in Wallingford, down beside the Thames, at an antiques arcade in a former coaching inn, The Lamb. Good morning. Good morning. You must be Paula. Hi, love to see you. Charlie, having dropped Steph off earlier, gets all this to himself. Still got hundreds in his wallet, remember? I have found these, which are of no quality, but they are so wacky. They're candle holders, and I'm sure they're French. They're spelter, so they're not bronze, but it doesn't really matter. When you've got a face like that, who cares? Carrying water cauldrons, and, of course, they form the candle holders. I think in terms of age, about 1900, and I think they are just huge fun. Now, they are priced up at over £90. Uh, the sort of thing that might have come in a, in a clearance or, or come worth the money, as they say. Um, and there would be a talking point in a sale room because they are different. He's back already, Paula. There we go. What about those? They're spelter. They're French. The late 19th century. Would 40 buy them? OK, let's say yeah. 40 pounds. Are you sure? Yeah, 40 pounds. Fab, thank you. Okay. Helter, spelter. It's not a race, you know, Charlie. You can take your time. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to buy a bit of nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense, but it's Japanese satsuma. It's 20th century and designed to appeal to Western tastes, and so strictly for export. It is an incense burner. It's got a gilded dog of foe on the top, most of the gilding's off, but at £10, it will make a profit. No negotiating, I'll have it. Apparently, it is a race. Well, look what I've found in a cabinet. Brilliant. A Satsuma well incense burner. No great age, no great quality, but £10, okay. and I'll have it, please. Oh, that's brilliant, then. Thank you. Thank you very much, yep. So I owe you £50. Not exactly a difficult customer, is he? Your lucky day. <laughs> very <laughs> lucky day. Make haste, Paula, although I'm not sure why. Thank okay, you very thank much. You. So let's get back to the super minx. Stow away those treasures. Ah, he may have spotted that shop earlier. There are linen presses, dressers, super things. But these are the sort of... I could say these are the cheap items. That is absurd. What doesn't sell today? Corner cupboards. But it's small. It's in tremendous condition. It is not Georgian, but it's got some age here. You can see here. I think this, this is Edwardian. It's got lovely astral glazing. 13 panes of glass, wall-mounted, and it's £20. Hello. There's a corner cupboard here, and it's £20. And, do you know, I can't resist it. May I buy it? Are you a man I can give money to? Most certainly. Splendid. He didn't even make it inside this time. Do you always sell things on the pavement here? Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. Cash, then carry. May I pick it up and take it? You certainly can. Thank you, Stuart. Cheers. 
Bye bye. Now, is he really off on this occasion? Yes, I think he is. Meanwhile, Steph's taking a shopping timeout back in the Chiltern Hills at Prince's Risborough, where she's come to discover how a humble piece of traditional English furniture acquired some very Italian style. Thank you. Prego. This is the Windsor chair, based on a design that stretches back several centuries and is still hugely popular today. The chair, with its distinctive bent wood frame and arched back, has long been associated with the craftsmen of nearby High Wycombe. But as Henry Tadros of Urkel can attest, the Windsor became a best-selling British export thanks to the company's fondatore, Signor Ercolani. So, oh, Henry, tell me, who was Lucien Ercolani? Lucien Ercolani was my great-grandfather. He was actually Luciano Ercolani uh, because he was Italian. Uh, he moved over to England and changed his name to Lucien Ercolani before setting up uh, Urkel Furniture. And this is him with his uh, two sons, uh, Lucien and Barry. Nowadays, Urkel is a household name, but the fortunes of the company were transformed during World War II by the Utility Furniture Advisory Committee, when the need to supply Britain's population with low-cost furniture gave Henry's great-grandfather an opportunity to reinvent an old classic. The Utility Furniture Scheme was a kind of government uh, rebuilding effort after the Second World War. Uh, we were part of it with our kitchen chair. Uh, we won a tender to make 100,000 uh, chairs. Uh, we sold at 50 pence each. And we had worked out how to mass produce the winter chair. Thanks in part to their pioneering use of steam. We are bending an arm for a chair here. Uh, it's been in the steam retort for an hour, and then it will be bent round this mould and then put in the oven overnight to dry out. How long will it take him to bend it? Uh, it will be seconds, as you're just about to see. Really? Yeah. And the whole thing is about a mi minute from start to end. And that's how you were able to manufacture so many chairs. But as well as machine bending, they also had to do hand bending. Thomas has taken the timber out of the retort. It's been in there about 45 minutes. It's solid beach, strong but flexible. They're then going to put it in the ice and they're going to put pressure all the way around it to make sure that there's nowhere for the grain to escape. Uh, when you start bending it. OK, Steph, seen enough? Time to get bending, girl. It's going to need a little bit of welly, a bit of them. I'll try my best. I don't know if I'm going to be strong enough. You're going to want to put your hand on the out end, like yeah, that. like that. Uh, and then bring it round, and we're going to... Then you push it down. Like that? Yeah. Clamp it. Hold it there when we clamp it in, because it will just spring straight back out, if not. Good effort. In 1946, the Urkel utility chairs were unveiled at London's Britain Can Make It exhibition, and a year later, the company's first production line furniture went on sale to the public. And these are the completed chairs? Yeah, so these are the finished chairs. So it's amazing that 80 years later we can still sell the same designs. My great-grandfather made them, and they're still relevant, fresh. And people sometimes don't know that they're made in the 50s. They think they're modern, modern pieces today. Hey, bella storia, eh? Now, time to catch up with our speedy shopper. Well, we'll try to. Oh, and here is the Thames. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's not bad, Johnny. Punts, cycles, and all that. Yep, you guessed it. He's just coming into the centre of Oxford. He even found somewhere to park. That's a miracle. And within walking distance of his final shot. Good afternoon. Hello. Is it Vincent? Yes, nice to meet you, Charlie. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. No wonder. He's still got over £230 left. Not going to buy just anything, though. Oh, no. Look at this for quality. Oak cabinet. Do you know what this is? It's an oak dentist's cabinet. Any time between 1890 and 1910, it's just the most wonderful quality. I wonder where it was made. It might have maker's name on it. Good grief. Ransom and Randolph Company. I'd never have guessed that. Made in America. How rare is that? And these, instead of pull-out drawers, are on the turn. Look at that. And look at the quality of the hinges. Oh, yes. 
Ticket price, £3,600. Let's talk to Vincent anyway. This is magnificent. Yes, it's a handy little piece. I think it's the only one of its kind in the country. I've sold quite a few yeah. dental cabinets in my time, but never one like this. Yeah, They've it's... always had traditional pull-out drawers. Yeah. And do you know why it's of interest to me? No, go on. My uncle was a dentist. My cousin was a dentist. Had I passed any exams at school, I would have been a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here's Ms Connell for her appointment. She's not got quite so much in her pocket, remember? Just £28.26. I've spoken something I think is really cool. It is an original, vintage, dinky, Captain Scarlet Spectrum Pursuit Vehicle toy. I like anything to do with TV memorabilia, toys, collectibles, and Captain Scarlet, anything Jeremy Anderson in particular, is I'm a big fan. And I'm not the only one. There are huge amounts of collectors for memorabilia like this. So you've got the dinky collectors and the TV memorabilia collectors. It's in good condition, got its original box, got its original packaging, which is what collectors want, £165. So I will put it back for the right person to find it. It's all been window shopping so far with her. Sorry. What, what are you doing? I'm looking in your cabinet. You carry on. I'm going round the corner. Quite right, too. Now, look at the history in this cabinet. There are amazing Roman coins, Egyptian beads, Bronze Age axes, and what's more, a cannonball. HMS Crocodile. Cast iron cannon shot recovered from the wreck site of a 24 gun Royal Navy warship which sank at Prawl Point, Devon on the 9th of May 1784. Returning from Bombay, £75. Well, at auction it would make either a tenner or a hundred pounds, I think. Amazing. I've got Roger Box on the phone for you. Is Roger the owner of the cannibal? Yes, yep. Hello? Crikey, that was efficient. Hello, Roger. Well, it's Charlie Ross here, looking at your amazing cabinet. And I'm just loving your cannonball. And, and, and the man you bought it off is the man that dived down to the ship. No, no, that is cast... May I say cast-iron providence, as it's cast-iron. Yeah, I think we got that, Charlie. Yeah. Brilliant. Are you, op are you open to any negotiation on this splendid object? You're not. There's, there's absolutely no point in me offering you 50 quid, is there? You're a man of principle, and so am I. I shall pay you your £75. Sounds like Charlie's just splashed out on a cannonball. Thanks. Bye-bye. What a wonderful man. He bought it off the chap that is the only man to have gone into the wreck, the crocodile. He would not move on the price because he said, they're not making any more of these. <laughs> the last one they made was 200 years ago. So, whilst he does the heavy lifting, let's see what Steph's come up with. It's in this cabinet here, yep. and it's this little okay. combine desk set item. It's really interesting. That it's a ruler, letter opening knife, magnifying glass, all everything in one. all in one. Very curious. I really like it. It's got a little bit of damage on it. Yep. Well, it goes with the age, I do. It goes with the age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> How old would you think it would be? I don't know. I think it's probably mid 20th century. Yeah, don't I don't think it's so. that, it's that not, old, no, but it's, it's not... just an unusual piece. It is unusual, and it's not, and with the centimetres on one side, the inches yeah. on the other, usable thing. Yeah, absolutely. Bit of fun. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Really nice. I yeah. really like it, and it is fifteen pounds. Mere fifteen pounds. So deal at fifteen. Yeah, absolutely. Not quite spent the lot this time, then. That was invigorating. Did you have a successful shop? I think so. Did you? Very successful. Well, now, where did you park the car? A long, long way away. Oh, we better get walking, then. I'll take you to it. And after that, <laughs> it'll be shut away, I guess. <laughs> Auction day is upon us. Down there is Wooten, and that's the edge. After starting out back in Bedfordshire, at Dunstable, our two trippers have headed the Hillman West towards an auction in deepest Gloucestershire and the eponymous auction rooms with internet bidding. Sun is out, the sky is blue. I'll make a profit, will you? I don't know about that, I'm praying for one. Well, you come to the right place, a former church. Steph parted with £145 for her five auction lots. This is a bit of a mystery, this lot. I like the quality for success in the national art competition. Lots of allegorical figures embossed into it, and it's a very, very impressive plaque. 
beautifully made. Plus, Steph has discovered it's the work of noted French metal worker Antoine Vecht. Charlie spent a wee bit more, £210, for his five lots. They're fairly unusual items, and as such, I think there might be a profit in these. I could see these making 100 To the right person, yeah, I think a collectible item. Which just leaves one other very important person we need to hear from, auctioneer John Rolfe. And we've got the cannibal and, of course, the certificate that goes with it. I hope we get a prize that will do justice to the chap who dived down to get it. The letter opener, what a novelty piece. It's everything you could ever need on it and a lovely gift, and I think it will do quite well. So the Brass Vesta case is personally my favourite piece in the sale today, and what our clients are looking for, I think that's got the best chance of all the items we've seen. Oh, yes. Did you hear that, Charlie? Charlie! Charlie, come on. <laughs> Have we started? <laughs> oh, yes. First up, Charlie's Satsuma incense burner. 20, 20, 20. 20 straight in online. Is that 25, sir? 25, you bid me. 30. Do I see 35? I do. 35 coming back in online oh, again. Do I see 40 moving in a lot? <laughs> it's an incense, but a 35. Do I see 40 coming in? All in 35. Oh, sure. Oh, yes! yes. Just a tenner. I told you it'd make more than 30. Great result, Charlie, and sage prophecy, Steph. You're a world expert on Satsuma. Do you want to see my dance? All right, 20 to 3. I'm not sure anyone can predict how her giant medallion will do, though. And where do we see it? 50 to be off, should we say? 50 50? You bid me 30, but who gives me 5? Because 30. 5. Cost I've got 30. 40. 45. I've got 50. 55. Steph. I've got 60. Steph. Do I see 65 elsewhere? Selling with me at 60, order at 60 pounds with me against you all. Oh, great. Well That's done. what I hope to would make. Girl. Yes, please accept an award for profit making. There's one in the VA. Mm. So there's one in the VA. You always have things that are in the Oh, we hope. I tried to. <laughs> Do the VA have stuff found on pavements? Charlie's Corner Cupboard is next. 30 pounds. 30, 30, 30 still serves a purpose, doesn't it? 20 pounds, shall we say? £20 oh. got you in at 20, 20 25. Oh, yeah. Selling then at 20, ordering at 20. Oh. 25. Oh, 30. 35. With you, sir, at 35. Don't put your hand down now. You've got it at 35. Do I see 40? Selling at 35, ordering at 35. With you. Oh, a profit again. again. <laughs> Charlie experiences little else these days. Not a massive one. No, but a profit so not a profit, but it's a profit. Steph's silver spoons are next under the hammer. £20 to be off, then, shall we say? Gosh, make 20 for six, decades, please, please. 20, I have it. Do I see five? The bid's at 20. Do I see 25? 25. Is 30, 25. Out at 35, it's your bid, sir. Selling at 35. Order at 35 with the gentleman. Oh, what a shame. It is. After such a promising start, too. That's the second time I've lost on a set of two spoons, and both times I lost about 15 quid, so I'm not... Steph. I'm not... No more spoons. spoons. Well, up next is an altogether rare item. Charlie's Brass Privy Vesta Case. You know, you don't see these every day, do you? No. 66A. And where do we sit? Should we start at £20, surely? 20, 20 bid, 40 bid on the internet straight. See? Thank you, 40 bid. Bids on the internet, 40. Bid, bid, 40. <laughs> up to 45, do I see 50 now? 50, nice novelty piece there at £50. I see 55. Gentlemen's 55 in the room. 60 online, 65. Thank you, sir, for your interest. Is it still holding at 60? Do I see five elsewhere? Oh. 65. 65. Do I see 70? I do. 75 just Yay. in time. 80 just in time. Do I see 85 now? 80 quid. Do I see 85? Selling at 80, on an 80. 80 pounds. Talk about spending a penny. That was a bit of a bargain for someone. Well, that's better than my whole profit for the last time, so you're doing well. Steph's rusty old pump is next. Can she squeeze a profit out of it? 30, 30, 30, the pump. 20, the pump. He's just 20. 20. 20. 40 pounds. You're in at 20. Take so your bit of 20, sir. Thank you. You'll be five. At the front, holding at 20. Do I see five? 25. 30. 35. This isn't a relative 40, of yours here. 45. 45. 50. 55. This is. Shakes his head. Holding at the front at 50. Do I see 55 elsewhere? Selling at 50 to you, sir. Oh, that's amazing! That went down awfully well. <laughs> I'm twitching up in the paddock here. But I've still got my cannonball to come. Well, after Steph's heavy metal heroics, I'd have thought the old thing had every chance. 
40, 40, 40, all that provenance there, 40 pounds. I'll go 20 to be off then if I must. 20, 20 bid, 25 bid, 30 bid, 35 bid. Do I see 40 now? Ends at bid 35, bid 40 online, do I see 45 elsewhere? Ends at bid 40, do I see 45 oh, coming Charlie. in? 40 bid, do I see 45? 45 on my book, do I see 50? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 50 bid on the Ooh. 50 bid on the internet. 55 on my book. Do I see 60? You get to me. I'm out at 60 pounds. The internet bid. Do I see 65? Yeah. Was that a bid, sir? Uh, no, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be illegal. A <laughs> selling then. The internet bid of 60 pounds. All done. Oh, so what a shame. Five, eight, four, zero. Thank you. It's quite cheap for weight. <laughs> uh, that's one way of looking at it. 60 pounds is not too bad, is it? No, it's not too bad. Now, how will Steph's Bakelite and tin table fare? 20 pounds we save for it then, and that's big. Do I see 25? The bid's there at 20. I've got 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay, do I see 45 coming in? Selling at 40, we're done at 40. Oh, that's a big That man has impeccable taste. They're all like that round here. But what will Britain make of Charlie's be stilted candlestick holders. Are they 50 the pack? 50 the pack? 20 the pack, you baby. Oh, you're 55. 55. I've got 30. 35. I've got 40. 45. In the room at 45, do I see 50 elsewhere? Holding on my left at 45, do I see 50 coming in? 50 on the balcony, 55. 60. 65. 70. 75. 80. 85. 90. 55. 100. 100 pounds. 20. 110. On my left, do I see 120 elsewhere? <laughs> Selling at 110. All at 110. On my left. <sighs> hey, oh, oh, nice. Nice. well done, Charlie. Yeah, lovely auction here. In conjunction with your canny purchase, Charlie. Not for me to say, but I thought they were rather expensive. It's a profit. The auctioneer was very taken with Steph's novelty office gadget. 2020, 20. 20. Ten pounds, you bid me, surely. Ten, ten, ten. Gentlemen's bid me ten. Who bids me fifteen? He's a lovely gentleman. Bids at twenty. Ten pounds. Might be in though. Fifteen's on the internet. Don't miss at twenty. Oh. We've done twenty-five, sir. Twenty-five. Thirty. I've got thirty on the internet. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Thank you, sir. Considered bid. Do I see forty now? Selling to the gentleman standing in at thirty-five. This. Order at thirty-five. This in oh. relative oh. terms oh. is one of the <laughs> finest sales I've ever seen. Yes, it was a bit of a triumph. That's a brilliant result. Here we go. Let's go. So, while they depart to collect their rewards, here are the glad tidings. Steph started out with £158.26p, and, and after auction costs, she made a proper profit of over £30. While Charlie, who began with £365.26, and produced yet more profits after costs. So, he's now more than doubled his money. Take my hat off to you. You have now got the road trip. I actually made some money. It's you amazing. Did make some money. Competition is on, Charlie. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Come on, Steph. You can do this.